it's it's about going live. Good evening, good evening, Basta Yari. Uh, <laughs> can you hear me? Okay. I can hear you. I can hear you. Yeah. Apolo apologies. Um. Anyways, I hear you, yeah. we, sh we sh it should it should it should be live now. So the challenge is going to be how how much we can share on all platforms. Are you hearing me as well? Yes, I can hear you, sir. Okay. Person, are you there? I can't hear. I'm here. I'm here. Can you? I can use an alternative device to confirm there is a uh, there is um sound on YouTube. Alternative device going on. Okay, maybe let me use my phone or something. Don't worry. Um, I seek. I can I can, can you hear me? You think we are good, right? So, oh, ladies and gentlemen, I will wait for another five minutes so that some other guys can join us. And then five minutes after 6 p.m., then I will start with the program.
Ivan Milako, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay, I'll call. There is a lawyer that is around and wants to address our issue. So, the voice is I saw no new Bolarima, if you are there, you're not the host. Or your co-host, by the way. Hello, good evening. Yeah, thank you. Barista and Bolarima, can you try, try and talk, please? Just to be sure can you can... Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Bolarima. Okay. Over to you. Thanks. Good evening, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our program this evening. Uh, I would like to especially welcome Atoni Yeri. Thanks so much for gracing this occasion. Thanks for always yielding to our call. I, before we like dive right in, while we are waiting for others to join, I would just invite the president of NYSIG, uh, Amaka, to just give you a speech. Over to you, Amaka. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you, Bolarima. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, I'd like to thank the NYSIG team for putting this um, information together to be able to uh, allow people to ask questions to uh, Mr. Ayari, because I'm sure most of us are worried about what our future would be seen as what has happened in Ukraine, Russia. So um, I'm really grateful to everyone who took out their time to put this um, event together. And thank you very much, Mr. Ayari. And we will continue to um, see to the benefits of our members. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Amaka. Um, and like Amaka rightly said, um, the program is basically to, you know, avail ourselves of uh, information. In the times we are especially, it's important to have access to information and not just information, accurate information, verified information. And that is why we have here in our midst, uh, Barista Yari, who is here to answer some of the burning questions we have on our minds. Uh, a lot of people are maybe worried, they're not sure what the future holds, what the next steps to take her. Huh? Just um, gather your questions, drop your questions in the chat box, please. And I would read one after the other to Barista Yari. And um, all questions will be attended to. Uh, so please just feel free, leave your, um, drop your questions in the chat box, please. And um, yeah, we will start in a minute time, 6 or 5. I would start, I have some questions already. But if we have people in the house who have questions to ask, please feel free to drop your questions in the chat box. I will be reading them as um, they have been dropped. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so it's six or five. I think we can just um, kick off now. Thank you so much, Barry Sire, for being here. Thanks for gracing this occasion once more. So I'll just go straight to the point. Um, I have a lot of questions here that bother around um, what next. So a lot of people are here in Germany now from Ukraine, and they are not so certain what the next steps to take. How can they be legalized here? Can they start schooling here? These are one of the major questions we have um, at the moment. 
Okay. Um, in the first place, um, I want to make it clear. My surname is Imasi and not Iyare. No? So, Mr. Imasi, Iyare is my first name. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, thanks a lot for giving me this opportunity to talk to my people. Um, I will start, first of all, with the issues of uh, trying to make the possibility to remain in Germany. Um, our internal affairs minister and other internal affairs minister within the European community uh, sat last week and said, um, at the moment, anybody leaving Ukraine and that is officially stamped in because um, you have to have a passport and this passport has to be stamped in at the border. If it's not stamped in at the border, which means you don't get the first 90 days that you're supposed to remain in the country. And there should be cases too where people are not having passport with them because um, as I have realized at the moment, some people had their passport with the foreign office in their different cities, just the way it is here in Germany for, um, um, for giving a, a visa or they applied for a visa, they have to take their passport from them. So such people, maybe there will be an extra regulation for them by uh, if they finally cross uh, one of the uh, borders and enter into the European community. So in Germany, um, there's a certain law that was made during the time of the Balkan War. The Balkan War um, was this war that happened in former Yugosla uh, Yugoslavia. And many people have to leave Yugoslavia those days and came to the European uh, uh, Union. And this law is called uh, mass inf influx of movement of people from one country, from a country of war or from a country of difficulties and trying to enter any of the European Union uh, country seeking for protection. So this law now is what they are trying to reactivate and then say anybody who enters here from that war zone should be should have 90 days of uh, temporary stay. The 90 days can be prolonged to one year and the one year can be prolonged for another six months and the maximum stay is going to be um, three years. So after three years, maybe somebody may have a reason to ask for asylum, then he may move into asylum uh, uh, situation. But whoever is a student that entered from Ukraine and he wants to study in Germany, that is always what I've been telling many of the students that are calling me. I think that is the easiest way. So start writing application for an admission into any of the German universities. To be very, very frank and sincere, one has to be very careful because there are some universities here that take money that they are private universities, but majority of the German universities here, they are free. You don't pay tuition fee. So the only thing you pay is for you to have what we call a semester ticket. And the semester ticket is valid for six months. And with this semester ticket, you can travel around your area where you are going to the university or within the state there. And you may pay what we call the Arbeitungsgebühr and expenses for them to work on your, on your application, uh, which is normally uh, around 50 to 100 euros. It depends on the university that you apply to. And then there's, there are a lot of universities too in Germany that teaches an English language in the courses that you may apply for. So, of course, people who are doing masters, they have a better chance of gaining admission into a course where English is being used. And in most of the master courses here for foreigners are mostly in English language, but there are equally bachelor uh, degrees uh, courses that one can equally study in English language. But be very careful. Don't go and uh, fall in the hands of private universities where they will ask you to pay 20,000 
25,000, 13,000, 8,000, or whatsoever. So anytime you write to them, you are applying for, you are uh, doing an application, only first of all, find out if it is a public university or if they are going to ask for a tuition fee. They will always tell you. Because in this country where we are, the university, whether you attend a public university or a private university, there's no difference between the two. The ones that are attending a private university, they will come later to write the same final exam that you write as you, you that is attending a public university. And if you are looking for a job, nobody wants to know which university you attended. What they're looking is, is your scores good? You have a good score. So people that attend the private university does not necessarily have a better score than who goes to a public university. Those things are peculiar with the USA, uh, British, uh, uh, the UK, Canada, and Australia. But within our Central European countries here where we are, these things are not necessary. You can attend the university in the North, you can work later in the South, or you can go to university in the, in the East and work later in the West. So the results are always, the standard is uh, uh, extremely equal. So there's no difference between a public and a private university. The private university may be because you are a son of Mercedes-Benz or you are a son of uh, Porsche or you are a son of, uh, uh, um, what they call, uh, somebody that works that has a McDonald's, 20 or 50 McDonald's. So you want to remain within yourself. You can go to a private university so that you have people that you are moving around with that are, that are of, the same, of the same feather. But that does not make them more brilliant than whoever attended a public school. So if you start writing application as at now, you will, you will gain admission to the winter semester. The, the deadline for the summer semester has passed now. So, and this deadline, it varies from schools, from, from university to university. So please find out when you write to them or you apply to them, always find out when is your deadline uh, to which you can apply for um, a university course. And then another thing again, um, it is not only the university that is important in this country. The German economy is being held strongly by the um, so-called technical colleges. The technical colleges in this country are the ones that have been destroyed in Nigeria. These people are the ones that are, that are doing bricklaying. They are doing painting. They are doing roofers. They are doing furnitures. They are doing all kinds of handwork. And when you learn a handwork, it takes a maximum of three years. You finish your handworking. And, as, and when you are learning, you are being paid salary every month for you to take care of yourself. From this money they pay you, it differs from sometimes from 600 to 800 euros in a month. And if the money is not enough for you to eat and pay your house rent, the government will support you to pay your house rent. And you are going to school, you are earning money. So where else can you get such a thing? So it is something very great. And then, and then we have, uh, uh, that is a part based on the university and how to come into the legal system uh, so that you have a university, uh, what they call a, a student visa, and you can go to university and study. So if you enter into the country, because I have been having a lot of people who are worried because they don't have relatives here, they don't have friends here, and people are not really willing to take them. But at the moment, in every big city, there's, there are places already organized where you guys can go to. You go there, get yourself registered. It's very important if you enter into Germany, register yourself as quickly as possible. You can register care somebody. You must not have a house or you must, must, must not have an apartment or a dormitory that belongs to you, but you can register in Germany care somebody. For instance, you, you can write uh, uh, Johnson uh, Osakwe care uh, um, Imasi, uh, Iyare Imasi, and then you ride the street and where you are staying. So that one too has made you register. But many people uh, prefer to be registered at the train station because some people are there waiting at the train station to collect these guys that are coming. They, they help them, they send them to relevant places where they can go and get themselves registered. Because if you are registered, 
uh, which means you're already in the country, you are known that you are in the country. So when this loss uh, comes into effect, takes place, you profit from it. And I want to send a very strong warning, very strong warning to many of the Nigerian young students that are coming in. Um, day before yesterday, the police in Brima said some men are coming there to pick some young women. They are only out for young women. So you have to be very careful who you follow home. You may end up being used as a, a sex slave at home, or you'll be used as a housemaid. And at the end, too, and in the ninth, uh, you will not have rest of mind. There are good people in this country that may not have that intention, but there are some too that has that intention, and that is why they are after mostly young guests. So be very, 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 very careful whoever you follow home. Even if there has been cases in this country where even their wives, these pedophilia and dangerous men, even where their wives even help them to get these young guests. You may say because the wife is the one, the wife is standing there and the wife is saying they will take care of you. You follow them home. The wife may uh, be, be the one that is even trying to organize a young woman for the husband or for the boyfriend. So please be very careful and take precaution of the people you may fall into their, into their hands and into their traps. So as I said, in every um, city in the country presently, I've, I've goggled a lot of them today, in almost every uh, big city, once you enter uh, uh, refugees from Ukraine, um, you get a lot of information where you can go to get yourself registered. There they cook for them. They give them uh, pocket money. Doctors are equally there that will come and check and see how these things are going on and help and help in any, any way that they can help. So for most of you too that have children that came with your children, don't waste time. Start moving around, looking for the possibility for them to go to school. Because this country where we are, education is everything. If you don't have education here, you are going to have a very big problem. In Germany, you are paid according to your school level. If you finish only secondary school, they pay you according to secondary school level. If you attend the university, they pay you according to university level. If you're a professor, they pay you according to the professor level. So be very active and then look always for the possibility for you to get a better uh, life as quickly as possible. So um, if you don't find a place where you can hang up, uh, hang yourself or hang around, uh, then you can go to um, uh, houses where asylum can be applied for. But don't tell them you are asking for asylum. Very important. Don't tell them you are asking for asylum. You tell them you, you are from Ukraine and you are you were there before, you showed them your particulars, they will register you, and you tell them you are not asking for asylum. Because at the moment, uh, people from Nigeria or from Ghana or from Zimbabwe or from South Africa that, that were in Ukraine before, that are able to cross here now. These countries I mentioned, they don't have war in their, in their, in their, or, uh, in their countries of origin. So there's no reason for you not to start asking for asylum. Now, if you want to ask for asylum here, you must be politically pursued in your country or you have problem because of your religion, or Boko Haram is disturbing the area where you are coming from, or um, before women can say they want to circumcise me, that is why I ran away, they allow me to stay. So those things now does not apply to you as a student coming from Ukraine. Um, you should be able to uh, look for a possibility, mostly, Somebody who always want to read book, who wants to study and have a better life, will always want to pursue his or her education. So then let me go to the some other things that I have uh, uh, noted down here. Um, yeah, I've even said it already. Um, exactly. So if you're able to get um, an admission here, now that you are in the country, you are allowed to stay for 90 days. And uh, this 90 days may be extended later because now they are still working on it. They have not really confirmed if this right of living in the country is for 
uh, foreigners living in Ukraine. So what the only said at the moment is for Ukraine citizens and for foreigners that are having permanent visa in Ukraine. Because those people now, they are living there permanently, even if they don't have a Ukraine passport. They have been in the country, just as it is here in this country as well. There are many people here that are having yeah, permanent residence. residence. They don't want to they give don't up, want to give their, up. Uh, uh, their uh, what they call their nationality, their state of origin. So they still prefer to remain um, uh, their uh, citizens where they are coming from. So if you're able to get gain admission into the country, because normally before, if you are coming from Africa, uh, mostly from a third world country, and you want to come and study here, there's what we call a block account. This block account, it has the salary, it has increased, from, they increase the salary, the money from time to time. Now it is presently at 10,332 euros that you have to pay into an account uh, before you enter into the country. And this money, this uh, money that is in the account will be given to you from it. They'll be giving you every time 861 euros to pay some other dormitory, uh, uh, head insurance, and, and some other expenses that you have in a month. Everything is not given to you as well. Or you have somebody who can sign for you that is going to take uh, total uh, guarantee and total expenses of whatever you are doing in the country. I believe that now that you are inside, and if you should gain admission, that thing will not be asked for. So it's a very big privilege, very, very big privilege for whoever is now inside here. So, and if you are sending your results to the university or to the uh, uh, School of Applied Sciences, what we call a Fachhochschule, most of the time they may ask you to satisfy your results. If you want to do certification of results, you go to the relevant Rata House. We call it Rata House, a sort of a district um, community around. If you ask people around the world, they tell you, you ask them, where is Rata House? Rata House. Rata House is a place where you can marry you can register yourself and some other things. You go there and tell them you want to do certification of document, big law, big um, Germans, um, anybody from the age of 40 down in Germany speaks English. So people that are a little bit older, they have difficulties in speaking English language, but um, almost all understand English, but they don't want to speak. So if you are there, if you, if you, if you have difficulties, and they don't understand you, you should ask for somebody who speaks the English language, or you go there with um, a sort of a small dictionary with a the translator. There's, there are some dictionaries that are that are written in German and English. It can be translated. You will show them, they will know what you're talking about. So they will do that paper for you so that you can then scan it and send to them, or you send it through the post office because the post office here is, everything we are doing here has to do with the post office. It is not unlike where we are coming, where the people that took over the country destroyed our post office. Many people don't even know, some of you that are at the age of 20 or under 30, they never knew that post office functioned before in Nigeria. Post office was functioning before those days in Nigeria. Even, even in the early 80s, they bring letters to the villages. Villages about 800 kilometers away from Lagos. So that time, these things were functioning. So now in this country, they'll be giving you letters, they will send letters to the address you give them. And uh, if you are lucky, the letter will be translated into English language, the language that you told them that you understand, or the one you tell them that you, uh, that is uh, uh, your official language. If you're unlucky, it will be sent to you in German. So if the letter is sent to you in German, please don't throw it away. Look for somebody who will help you to translate this letter. Because in this country where we are, the war that they fight here, they fight you with letters. Nobody will, will take a stick and beat you. So they will send you letters every every time. And in this letter, there are time limited. There are limited time that they want you to react to this letter that they are sending you. If you don't react before, uh, after that time, then your chance is closed. Nowhere you will go to, nobody will listen to you. No? Nobody. No manna will come from heaven and start telling them and start uh, helping you. If you like, you pray from now to 100 years. Nobody will listen to you in this country. Prayer does not work here. So um, so then let me go to the other uh, issues that I've been able to find out for you guys. Um, yeah, get yourself registered. And all these places where you can... Uh, for people that are, for instance, coming, coming to my state in Shilvji Holstein, uh, I am sitting in Kiel. 
um, there's um, a central uh, building where people are being welcomed, people that are coming out from Ukraine. It is in Bad Zigebek, a city called Bad Zigebek. In Bad Zigebek, Landes Unterkunft. That is where now the internal affairs minister here has prepared. They showed the pictures yesterday, and even today you can still find it in the internet. So if you are in Schleswig-Holstein, Bad Zigebek is not so far away from Hamburg. You can always ask somebody there to bring you there and then they will keep you there. You have a room, you have uh, uh, clean water to drink, you have a shower, you have light, everything is there and they will take care of you. And they are even thinking about, uh, if that place is not enough, they are going to extend it again to a city called Ziet. Ziet is, is equally in Holstein in Christ, not Friesland. That one is, is a little bit far away from you guys, but whoever wants to go to such place, they can go. But in Hamburg, um, if you land at the uh, centrum in Hamburg, uh, in, the, in the train centrum in Hamburg, there are people that are wearing uh, yellow, uh, a yellow kind of uh, uh, vest, a sort of vest on their body. These people are the ones that are welcoming people there, and they are taking them to uh, a, a building where, uh, if you want to take a sign on normally, that is the first place you go to. And people are lining up, they're getting themselves registered, but they're not taking asylum. So from there, they will look for a house and ask you to go. In Bayern, uh, I've understood that in Bayern, they are even taking many of these people to hotel. Some hotel have even decided to give them uh, out of free will rooms and so that they can put people temporarily, temporarily, and they are taking care of whoever comes from Ukraine that is around there. So that is all what I can tell you guys at the moment. Even in Kiel, in my city, uh, sorry, there's a place in here called Schusterkrug and uh, Akona Strasse. There they have a place for 300 people. And many some people are already coming. And this is how our government is trying here to create space and possibilities for whoever is coming to the country so that they will have a place to stay for the meantime until their status are finally arranged and organized. So that is the issue at the moment. And I would like to take your questions now. So that, um, yeah, and I, I found one information here equally um, in the net. Let me, that I would like to give you. It is written in the net that um, in Germany, uh, we have over 350 English taught bachelors bachelors in Germany, and then uh, in another place again, about 1,500 uh, places where masters uh, in English is equally done in Germany, and over 85 English taught PhDs in Germany. Uh, these are courses where English language is used as means of lecture, writing, and speaking and conversation in the in the uh, in the uh, in the hall, so and then we have uh, equally over one hundred eighty-five English taught distance learning online. People that want to learn online as well. So you see, there are a lot of possibilities. So hopefully, when you guys were leaving Ukraine, you came with your results. So because if you left those things there, then you are going to have difficulties. You know, so there has been disturbing, uh, very very disturbing videos and uh, where they are stopping our people from crossing the border. And uh, um, uh, gentlemen, uh, these things, you people should not take it uh, so harsh because anywhere where you are living uh, in the Western world, that is not really the Western world, but anywhere you are living where there are Oibo people, there's always this kind of, this kind of uh, maltreatment. It is not something new. No, so if 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 Nigeria was able to provide for you guys, you will not come here and be stranded in a, another man's country. So take this things uh, not so serious because um, racism has always been around. It is nothing new. We that are staying here, we have been going through this thing from time to time. You have to arrange yourself with the society. Now you should always consider that where you are coming from is not better. If it's better, you will not come here. You will not come to these people. You will only come and visit and go back. No? So the leaders that have been leading our country since after independence, they should be questionable. 
in the in the in the sixties, in the sixties and the uh, middle of uh, nineteen uh, in, uh, in the seventies, the University of Lagos was one of the best in the whole world. The University of Lagos, the Prime Minister of the UK, uh, John Major, John Major studied in the University of Lagos. He was born in Lagos, and many white people were coming to Nigeria to study those days. University of Lagos, University of Ibadan, Unsuka University, Amadou Bello University. They were coming from all over the world to come and study in Nigeria. So the, now the people that took over the country, they should they should ask themselves questions. Why is it that it came to this uh, this uh, this point that it is now that young people are stranded in a no man's land? That place is not their home. Ukraine is not their home. Yeah. So the video I saw last time, a 17 years old girl talking about how that she's in Ukraine and she studied study medicine. This country where we are in Germany, no parents will allow her daughter at the age of 15 to leave this country. They will never allow it. Even the ones that are 20 years of age, they don't allow them to go out because they want to protect them. They have not gone to that extent with which they can live. But Nigerians and Africans who are allowed 17 years old, leave a home that is even still a child, to come to somewhere else and now they are stranded there. It is very, very bad. It's very bad. So let me take your questions, please. Thank you so much, Anthony Massey. We have some questions here that um, center around those that came in from maybe from Hungary or from Poland without getting their passport stamped. Um, what can they do about that? So they are in the country already, but their passport is not stamped at the Germany embassy. Um, where is the passport not stamped? In the German embassy, in the passport has to be stamped at the, at border. the border. So some came in without stamping their passports. Yeah, but uh, they had uh, they had a student visa in Ukraine. Yeah, they did. Yeah, then uh, that one is enough. That one is enough to prove that they, they were in Ukraine. They came from Ukraine. Okay. And then what about those that already um, registered at the border? They had their fingerprints taken already. Do they still need to register in the city that they are domiciled? Uh, which border did they take their fingerprint? At the Germany border. Uh, uh, Poland, uh, German border. I believe so. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, anybody, anybody that his finger was taken at the at the border, which I've not had till now. So I only knew that they were stamping them in because normally there's no reason to take their uh, fingerprints at the border. Once somebody is stamped, stamped in, it is enough to prove where the person came through, uh, how the person entered into the country. So if their fingerprints were, were taken, that does not mean that they are registered. So that is already the, the situation at the border. But now that they are in the country, they have to get themselves somewhere registered before the, the uh, it, it is like uh, what we call um, soup in Nigeria, before you slip into illegality. Yeah, when you are now, if you now enter into an illegal system, because you were not registered, before you can come out again to be legal, it's going to be a problem. So which means you have been staying in the country without not being known. So anybody who is here, the government here knows whoever is in the country because everything is, uh, is documented. Now everybody has a place where he's staying and how he came in and which visa or who was born here, even from the day they were born, everything uh, is uh, registered. So it is very important to get the address uh, written somewhere, of course. Um, where, 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 wherever you you go to, if you if you de if you decide to register yourself in in Munich, yeah, and then and then decide later to come to Hamburg, it may be very very difficult because they will ask you to go back to Munich again. So you you have to know where you want to stay. So uh, Bayern is a very, very difficult place for black people. So anybody who is going to Bayern has to be very, very careful. Yeah? The, black skin, the black skin is not, it's not much welcome there. Yeah? It's, it's better to come to the northern part of the country. Next question, please. Okay, sir. Um, sorry, can I ask a question? Could you please drop your question in the chat box, please? I'll read it once you send it in. Please, okay. just to make it a bit orderly, if Can you hear me? 
And now I can hear you, yeah. yeah we are on mute. I think someone muted me. Yeah, could you please drop your questions in the chat box? Yes. So I think a lot of the questions here, um, I can still see some people asking about how long can we stay? Um, Barista already answered that. Initially, you can get the 90 days and later can be extended by one year. And I think after that, uh, six months. So yes, um, can uh, I see a lot of questions again about um, asking if they can continue their studies from where they stopped in Ukraine. Is there a possibility that studies can be continued in Germany from where they stopped in Ukraine? <laughs> Uh, nah, I, uh, that one is not possible because uh, the Ukraine uh, uh, study system is definitely different from the German uh, study system. So um, maybe if they have results there uh, with which uh, it can be upgraded here, and the school is the one that will confirm and say, okay, they're already on this level, uh, maybe they will not tell them from which level they can start, you know? So it is, for instance, it's like if you want to go and learn German, uh, they will always give you a test and want to know where you can start. So uh, after the test now, the teachers will tell you you have to start from A2 or B1. So maybe that is how it's going to be, depending on the course that they were studying there. Um, some of them are studying uh, medicine. Uh, I don't know if they can study medicine in English in, in German because many of them are doing it here uh, in, uh, in, in English. Many of them are studying here in uh, um, uh, medicine in, uh, in, in German, but there are some private universities as well that teaches uh, medicine in, in English, but they call it a hell of money. You know? mm -hmm. uh, for two semesters, is about 25000 Okay, um, so um, there's this iPhone. Uh, can you hear me now? Can you please unmute and ask your questions? Are you uh, there? Okay. Okay, so where can we do? Where can we make the registration to be in German embassy? Is it we should go to the police or we should go to the immigration? Which one? Um, the, the registration the registration cannot be done in the foreign offices if that is what you are calling the immigration because it depends from city to city. There's some call it immigration office, some call it foreign office. So the place you have to register is you have to you have to goggle it that place where you are in the city where you are now at the moment. You have to goggle uh, Ukraine refugees. Ukraine refugees uh, registration. It will jump out for you in the in, in Google where you have to go. Yeah, it is not the police. It is not the foreign office. But if it is not possible for you to locate those places, but you can as well go to the police. The police will direct you down there. Of course, if you go to the police here and tell the police who you are, this is your information. This is your passport. This is where you are coming from. You don't know where to go to. They will carry you down there. No, they will carry you down there. Um, it's a question from Yannick. He says that um, he already registered at the police uh, the police station in Anova at the house under Behoda. However, they were given the valid permit until the 7th of April and not 90 days. Ah, okay. They, they gave him a valid uh, permit to April. April 7th, yes. Yeah, so uh, which means after then, which means they are still waiting for the final decision from process. Because uh, some, some of the foreign offices are saying people should relax, first of all, but get yourself registered so that you'll be known in the country. So when they finally pass this law at the end, they now have something in their hand with which they can work on. They can use to now attend people. So, but even if it's given to that day and you want to remain here, start writing the application. As I said to the university, if you want to study, if you don't want to study, you forget it. So if you want to do uh, a handwork, what we call uh, Osbidung, it's going to be difficult for you because Osbidung, you must speak German. Yeah, mm -hmm. many of the German, uh, many of the German Osbidung that you want to do here, like the, what I call the technical colleges in Nigeria, where you can learn a lot of handwork, different kinds of handwork. There, they always demand for German language B1. Mm -hmm. So that one is going to be diff difficult for you students who came from Ukraine 
uh, probably you people were studying in English language in Ukraine. So that one I don't know, probably in English language. So uh, if you come there with English language, you want to do uh, Osbidung here, that one is going to be difficult. They will not allow you because the places you are going to do your husband, you have to be speaking with people there and communicate with them, but not in English language. German is, uh, in Germany, English language is not your official language. Mm -hmm. And I would also suggest, so for others that have questions, especially that has to do with courses, um, schools to register to, we can help at the chapter level. So I, I want to believe that a lot of us are already in the chapter groups, so we could all assist with um, registering or admissions to school or registering to schools through uni assist or directly to the schools. So if you have a course you, in mind that you want to do or and you don't know the school, it's fine. We can assist, assist with that at the chapter level. So please just join. Um, I believe a lot of us are already on the chapter, but if you're not, just, just signify here and then... You um, um, uh, wait, Mrs. Uh, Ogunla, I want to say something very important. Very, very important. Everybody should listen. In this country where we are, it is always better to choose security. Security means you should enter into any course with which you can stay here for, for the meantime. Courses where they can take you as quickly as possible. So don't start saying you want to study medicine and because they don't take you in medicine, you want to stay at home, they will ask you to leave the country. They will ask you to leave the country because people who study medicine here, they must have in Germans that are Germans that are studying uh, uh, medicine here, they all have uh, 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 grade one in their A level. You must have grade one. What they will have? What we call? We have what we call here numerous clauses. With this numerous clause, because many, people, many people want to study medicine because of that, they have to relate it and uh, answering. They have to cut it, and I don't know how to put it in English. It has to be reduced for only the people that wrote very good examination in their A-level. But for you guys that are coming from Africa, as you are coming direct from Africa, you want to come and study medicine here, they have a quota system for people coming from Africa. I think it's about 3%, uh, 3% 3, 3 or 5%. So if they take, if they take, uh, uh, if they take uh, uh, 30 Germans in medicine, if some Africans are among two, even if you don't have that score, they will take you as well, you know? So, but, I always, that is how I have been living in this country uh, because I wanted to stay. If you want to stay, choose security. Don't aim too high. If you aim too high and you don't get that chance, then they will ask you to leave the country. So if you choose any course that is available and it is in English language and it's a course that the student can study, you'll be allowed to stay. Then later, then you can change to any other thing you want to do. Then you have your resident permit already. Yeah, um, iPhone, could you please ask your question? I'm sorry, I have a question. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Mr. Iphone. Okay. Yes, iPhone. Yes. I have a question. Um, Ola Milikon, please, one at a time. Thank you. iPhone, the floor is yours. Okay, yeah. So um, there's a friend of mine that is, that, that is coming from Ukraine, but he complained to me that after his registration at the university, he used um, the original certificate um to register for for the courses but until now no response from the like the certificate is still uh, with the university now if he wants to register to a jama university how how can he go about this since the original certificate is still with the university in ukraine <laughs> if you ask them to bring him copies from nigeria i don't have copies in uh, of the certificates in nigeria if you have copies I mean, in, in Nigeria. Yeah, the original, the original copies. Yeah, but it does not matter. Even here too, you have to give them first of all the photocopies. Yeah. Here you give them photocopies first of all. It's the day that they are writing you in, that is where you have to come with the original. The day you are doing your uh, immatriculation, that is where they need the original. First of all, they only need a scanned copy, a satisfied copy. Yeah, yeah. But the original is still with the university. That's the point. Yeah, okay, but it does not matter. Okay. <laughs> it does not matter. Yeah. So you can always ask, even in Nigeria, you can always ask them to give you a second uh, uh, sample. Thank you. Yeah? Thank you because, very much. because that result at the university now in Ukraine 
it can be considered as lost because if Russia continues to bomb there, then everything will vanish. So thank you very much, sir. We have so many people named iPhones. It's, of, it's impossible for me to call iPhone because there are so many iPhones. But I have a question is that there's someone in Berlin. He has a um, permanent Ukrainian um, permit and he doesn't know how to go about with his stay. So he has a permanent residence in Ukraine but he doesn't know what next step to take. Yeah, so uh, I've already spoken before about it. Maybe some people are coming in very late. So uh, now that you are in Berlin, go to the places where people are getting are being registered um even last night on television i saw people from caritas that were at the Bahnhof. i saw people from uh, red cross i even saw people from uh, what they call again uh johanita these people are getting people registered so even if you go to the train station now where people are coming in now they are get they are being registered there you can be registered as well so it is all about registration so that they will know that you are in the country. When the whole thing starts taking place, that you go there for your normal one-year visa. So after one year, as I said, after one year, you'll be given an extension of highest two years. But before that time, you people should take things into your hand and change your way, your status, yourself, by doing something good with it. Either you go to the university or you start learning a handwork or you look for a woman to get married or look for a man to get married. Yeah, because they will not continue to give you this visa forever. No, it is just, it is just the situation at the moment and you have to take advantage of it. And what about students that travel back to Nigeria? What are the opportunities for them? Students Those ones cannot come back again. Those ones cannot come back again. They are already in their safe countries. Oh, okay. Um, um, Michael, do you have a question? Can, I, can, uh, I, uh, can I ask I a question? Mean, can I, can I, I think ask? it's safe to say they can come back, but they Hello. will have to yeah, Michael the normal process. Please, could we mute our microphones? Michael, your hand has been raised for quite some time. Uh, thank you very much. Um, good evening, everyone. Sorry, my question is very simple. So I have this um, friend in um, that just moved in from Ukraine. But he just moved to Ukraine February, early February, early February. So he gave them his passport at the city for his registration. So his international passport is presently with them at Ukraine. So he could not uh, be stamped in. He told me yesterday that he's, he has moved to Hungary. That he's still having issues settling it. So for such a person coming into Germany, will it be possible for him to be recognized like he doesn't have an international passport right now his, his document and everything is with the school and the school are trying to get him a um like a residency before this whole thing started and one thing i know is even for us here that are already wow. students here they verify your certificate they will collect original they do everything they verify so for this situation sir what do you think he can do thank you mm, yeah so <clears throat> Now he's in Hungary and they are not allowing him to come here or what is the yes, problem sir. now? Yes, he's in Hungary now. They are not allowing him to come here. Even in Hungary, he told me he's specially separated because he does not have an international passport to present himself. And his certificate are also stuck with the school at the same time. Hmm. Yeah, this one, this one is a difficult situation because here in the Western world where we are, you have to always have something to prove yourself. Yeah, but is he having any kind of documents from there or he left his bag when he was leaving or there should be some other things that shows that he has been in the Ukraine? Well, I don't really have the perfect answer to that question, but from what he told me as at, um, this morning, he said everything he has to prove that he came in because we I was in Nigeria too. We flew together before we departed. So I knew was that everything he has to prove that it came in through the like the right way. Everything is with the school authority. Only maybe photocopies of his document are with him and which they are not, they say they can't validate such a thing that it's just ordinary photocopy. Mm, okay, so they don't want him to cross the border and go to any other- uh, Exactly, Schengen, exactly, uh, yeah. Yeah, good, but that too, where it is in Ukraine, you, uh, in Hungary, Hungary, Hungary. is equally- 
Yes. Um, Hungary is equally uh, equally belongs to the European Community, yes. and maybe that too he can he can do something out uh, uh, of his situation. But in the West, in this Western world uh, where we are, that is always a problem. Um, <clears throat> so I have even said it before. A lot of uh, uh, many people evacuated their citizens when the whole thing started, asked them to leave, but our people never cared about our own. They left, left these young boys and youngest there. Ne? So <clears throat> if they were, uh, if, if they could, uh, they were able to make a, a provision to leave as quickly as possible, maybe now he would have had those things with him. He would have went there to ask them to give him his, uh, give him his document back. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that's one. I cannot answer you that question. What is going to happen? Um, so uh, it is always like that. When war happens, when war is uh, is in progress, <coughs> there are people too that. So excuse me. There are people too that have difficulties. Uh, and as I said, I have. I was even informed that uh, through the uh, Ghanaian uh, embassy too that some people they are, they are not with their passport because they collected it from them. They were applying for a visa or renewal in Ukraine. So, but now they were able to uh, give them new passports. I think it was in uh, Slovenia or, Slo or, or Slovakia or Romania. No? So a lot of things are going around and a lot of things are happening. So the next question, please. There's a question here from Ola Meleko. He said the police took them from Munchen Albano, took their biometrics and pictures and took them to a camp or shelter where they, are, they were given rooms. However, there's no information yet on when they would get a permit from the government. Is it safe to still stay there? Uh, yeah. So if it's, uh, does it have somebody there or why did he went to Munchen? He has somebody uh, because of, uh, anyway, that place is a little bit closer to uh, uh, the border there, Odessa and some other places around there. So they can easily come into to Munchen, so yeah, so he has to be waiting there. No, he has to be waiting there. And um, as I said before, uh, time uh, goes, time counts. So they should start doing application, writing application to universities, to uh, schools here, so that they will give them, give them admission. Immediately you are given admission, then you are sure of staying here, no matter what happens later. No, so with admission paper alone and when you go later to the foreign office and to ask for a visa with the admission paper they will give you a better visa as a student visa again so you start living a normal life as a student with all the benefits that we have in this country and is there a deadline for those still in Hungary to come into Germany uh, which, which people for um, some of the students still in Hungary and that want to come to Germany is there a deadline whatsoever no 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 the ones the ones that are you mean the ones that are in, in ukraine or where in hungary there are some in, in hungary yeah as well, in hungary as far as they have not finally passed a law in brussels anybody can move around to anywhere he wants to go but once that law is passed they may start treating them based on dublin yes so there's what we call dublin Dublin law. The Dublin law says the first place in the European community that you step your legs, that is where you have to remain. You are not allowed to move to any other European country. <clears throat> so when you move there, immediately they see your passport, they open it, they see your stamp, or they make your fingerprint, and you are taking fingerprint before where you are coming from, they will, ask, they will send you back there. So now, our internal affairs minister said yesterday, anybody Anybody coming from Ukraine is allowed to choose the country, the European country that he wants to go to. They are allowed to move up and down. So we even have people here uh, yesterday in Hamburg that came. They said they are going to Denmark because they have relatives there. Some said they are going to Norway. Some said they are going to Finland. They have to continue to move. So some people even got to Berlin yesterday, but they said they are going to Czech Republic. They are not even because they have people there. And so everybody is allowed to move up and down. So, but you must not go to a place where the economical situation is far more better. I don't think many of them that are coming from Ukraine, they don't know how good it is with us here in Germany. So they stop there, but they believe that relatives and friends are more better. They will have people that were accompanying them. 
and they will have uh, people to make a discussion with, which is equally very, very nice if you are in the cycle of families. So everybody from Ukraine now can move to any country he or she wants to go because I have even understood yesterday that some some of our our Nigerians, uh, <clears throat> um, uh, boys and girls in Romania, they, they were able to move down here. Even Romania does not belong to Schengen. Yeah. So they, they took the train and they came to Germany. Yeah. So they are even in Germany. Romania is more far away né, than uh, Munich. So in Munich, there where this guy is now, there are a lot of Nigerians still moving around. There are a lot of black people are moving around there. Uh, he can always see them, interact with them. No, we have all kinds of people that are speaking different languages here. You meet Igbos everywhere. You meet Yorubas. You meet uh, the Edos. You meet the Shakiri. You meet, uh, they are all around here. People, you can always jump people that speak your, your, your own kind of language in Germany. Yes, thank you very much. Sir. Um, iPhone, that's next on the list. Can you unmute now and ask your question? Or has it been answered already? Um, okay, so I'm going to ask... Um, I'm actually in Kiel, but for a while I've been trying to like locate where I can go uh, make the registration, um, but I've not been able to find a place. And secondly, um, I have a friend that told me that she already got one year permit to stay in Munich. But then um, on my passport, um, I was stamped to stay for like 67 days. But then I was kind of worried to know what I can do or where I can go do the registration to probably get the one year permit for uh, to stay in Kiel. Um, uh, gentlemen, I don't even know why people are so worried about who got a higher visa, who got a less visa. I don't know why people are so... The, the most important thing, you are already allowed to stay. Whether they give you here only, uh, only one month or two months, they will not ask you to leave the country. Yeah? So... Even though, even those people they gave one year, it can be taken away from them anytime. Yeah, there are people that here they give five, give five years, and somebody they give one year, five years. We say they give them five years, they give them five years. But the next day they call them and collect the five years. Yeah, so <laughs> so it does not really matter how many months or how many how many weeks they give you. What matters is now you are now in the country. As I said before, take advantage of it. Become active. If you are not active, do in any time they ask you to live here, I beg not here. I beg not to here. You cannot beg anybody. And oh, you too. Not to take bribe. You cannot bribe anybody here. So you have to go with the time. Whatever, whatever they have given you now, start writing your application, send it to the university, uh, go into Google. You can even Google with English language here. No? Send it to the relevant places. They will start replying you. You can scan it. Send it online. A lot of even a lot of uh, what they call application uh, are even made now online. Yeah, you you upload your 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 results, and whatever results you, most of you have in the Ukraine, it can be translated here. Translation is of course very expensive, but I would prefer you don't translate it yourself. You send it first of all to them. Maybe they will have pity on you. They will translate it themselves uh, in the university. And the university will pay for it. Sometimes they have an extra fund, extra money that they keep for certain things for people that are less privileged and don't have enough to pay for certain things. They will do it free of charge for you. Yeah. So if you're already here in Keen, our advice is not to go to Bayern. If you go to Bayern, you go here me one day. Those people there, they are completely different from people in the in the in the northern part of the country. Yeah, they are very, very strict. Here, people are more friendly. No? There are some small, small things you will do here. They will not mind you. If you do it in Bayern, you go to prison. They don't joke there. It's better you remain here. Yeah? So as, as I said about the address before, where you can go and register yourself in Kiel, it's called uh, Akona Strasse. Let me write it in, a, in, a, uh, in, the, yeah, in the chat here, where, where you can go and then uh, register yourself. And a place called... Schuster Krug. No? Schuster Krug is, is equally here in Keen. No? There you can equally go and register yourself. No? Yeah. So there, once you once you do the registration, 
in the first place, you are known that you are here. It is known that you are here. And anything that is going to take place, you will be informed. And then uh, every other thing will, will, uh, will take place. So the next question, please. Yeah, Stephen, up to you. Are you there? Oluchi. Hey, thank you, Polaro. Uh, hello, you called me first. Oh, uh, you didn't respond. Is that all that you finish? And after that, you go. Thank you. So, um, so my question is that <clears throat> in my case, I have a family member that lives in Hamburg, and um, when I'm applying for the, so right now I've gone to Bakobelweg six. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it well, but Bakobelweg. That is very correct. That is very correct. It's very correct. Register, it's very correct yeah. And um, they told me to come back on the 9th to the eleventh to do the registration, right? But we also, my sister also took me to. My sister also took me to the basic sum, so I think something like that. And um, we were told to come amp, together again amp, after I did my registration. Amp, but yeah. the main question is, if I do this registration and I start applying for schools, while I'm waiting to do the, while I'm waiting for admission or anything from these schools, is there a way that I can also be here longer on the terms that I have family that already lives in Germany? Uh, no, uh, the system here uh, in this country, or it is mostly in general with the Western world, uh, the family that you call family here is uh, in Germany, mother, father, and children. Yeah, niece is not counted uh, to it, cousin is not counted to it, brother is not counted to it, and uncle is not counted to it. So the Oyibo family is brother, uh, is a husband and wife and children. So if these people are your relatives, you cannot stay with them. It is not possible. There's no law that says that a relative can come and stay with another relative. So that is why what you are doing now is the right thing. Get your registration, start uh, pursuing your own way so that you'll be allowed to do, to stay and then live your own, your, your own life. No, not the way it is with us in Africa, where this extended family system is uh, is allowed. Here in, in Germany, it is not like that. No, only father, mother, and children. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, Stephen, over to you now. Are you there now? Okay. Uh, good evening, house. Good evening. Uh, I have two questions. I just want to know that we are showing out our identity. Hope there will be no issue later or maybe they didn't approve our stay and uh, for not send us back to our various country of origin. That's one. And uh, there was one office we went to today about the registration, but we were scared because they said we should show our passport and the stamp from Poland, which we gave our passport to somebody to hold, so we didn't even go there with them. So I just want to be clarified there. If we are free to show them our passport and <coughs> that there, so hope there will no issue later on that. Thank you. Uh, you, you see, so it is, so it is, are very funny because I don't know where you people get all these ideas. Uh, um, now, at the moment, it is even a long time. After the bombing of 9-11 in America, America forced many countries in the world to start doing biometric uh, passport. So with this biometric passport, that is what you are having now. So if you don't show people your identity, or you may now go and use a different identity later, nobody will believe you. So now this situation that it is now, they are talking about these things now, how people should behave. Or you would not say today, tomorrow, they say no. There are anybody who is telling you that one, that if you submit your passport, something can happen to you. Well, it can, it can, it can equally come. No? Because if you don't have, if you don't use the chance that you have now, 
as I've been saying the whole time to gain admission, you did not get admission. Or you both will start telling you what have you been doing this whole, the whole time in our country, then it's better you go away. Because here, they want people, that is why the main thing, the main reason why Germany is even allowing people to come here, mostly young people, is because they need people that will be trained, that will work hard and start any money later and help them to build the nation and pay taxes. Now, old people are not wanted in this country. If you are old here, they do everything possible to chase you out. Yeah, it is only young people they wanted to come because of the demo, uh, demographic problem we are having now. No, almost every almost every uh, fourth fifth woman don't have a child in this country, so the population is dying every day. So they need experts that will be trained here, and they will start working and start paying taxes into the system. The free education that all of us enjoy in this country, it costs the German the German uh, taxpayers, the seats that they give to any of you in the university where you are sitting and learning, it costs the German government here before to, to when you finish 150,000 euros. So you may ask how are this be calculated? They have a, 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 a heater, they have teachers that are being paid, they have people that are cleaning the, the, the houses there, the, the halls and the uh, dormitory or wherever and who you people are. And the materials that are giving you to learn is they are all free. Now, the people that they bring there, the professor prints every day and come and share in the, in the, in the tuition hall is free. Everybody gets it free. Everybody pays for it. So uh, they are not doing this thing because they are stupid. Now, allowing young people to, <laughs> to build their life. As I said before, uh, uh, it is only with education, that is how you can survive in this country uh, called Germany. That is the only possibility in the Western world. Okay then. Yes, uh, Uchina, are you there? Yes, yes, I'm Good here. Um, Good evening. Good evening. Sorry, I joined, uh, I joined the meeting late because I just found out about this meeting actually. So I just want to ask some questions that can help me clarify some things. Um, first of all, I and my friends are still in Poland, not Hungary. We're in Poland and we've been just, um, trying to see if we could cross over to Germany legally and be registered. And then we heard about the 90 days that will be given to international students. We're international students, by the way. We heard about the 90 days that will be given to us. And um, what else? We also want to ask if um, after crossing over to Germany and being registered and given said 90 days, we'll be given a... Uh, an ability to work or is it just looking for admission that we will have to do because we are um, fifth and sixth year medical students so it's not admission to start from first year we are looking for we are trying to transfer but our school hasn't re um, released our transcripts yet to prove that we were fifth and sixth year medical students um, in Ukraine so um, while we are waiting for the school to release our transcripts is there a way that we can elongate our stay by finding um, jobs to do. And as soon as the transcripts come, is there, um, can we also transfer to uh, medical schools in Germany? Mm, um, it, has been, it has been in discussion now since the war started. Um, there's a state in Germany called North Rhine-Westfalen. It's the biggest state in Germany. There they are even saying they should give all war refugees from uh, Ukraine, uh, uh, the, uh, what they call, we'll call it working permit, Arbeiterlaubnis, so that they can work <clears throat> and take care of themselves. So every state is suggesting what should be done because they have not, they have not been able to make a law now and say this law says so and so and so. So they are only using what we call a rich linear that uh, helped them those days when the war broke out in in uh, uh, in former Yugoslavia. So many people came here. So that is what they are, they are using now at the moment. So anybody giving that paper will probably equally get a working uh, permit. But even, even if you don't have a working permit, they will take care of you. They will give you money to eat in a month. They pay for your uh, health care. They pay for your apartment. 
They make sure that life goes on with you. But the most important thing is you don't sit down and fold your hands and be waiting for them to do everything for you. So um, in terms of medicine, we have even said it, I've even said it before. Um, uh, I don't know because we have a private universities here in uh, 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 that teaches medicine as well, but there it is very expensive. There uh, they can teach you people in English language, but if you want to go to a public German university, there you have to learn German. There they are being only taught in German language. So um, I don't know how you are going to do it, or you decide to go to a place where you have the high quality some courses called health healthcare or some other things that that English uh, they use English language to teach them so that you can enter into the system legally, uh, have a student visa, then after some years you can change. But the situation in Ukraine, nobody knows when the war is going to end. Even, even, even when the war ends, students may not go back there anymore because the infrastructure there uh, in many cities have been totally destroyed and it may not help you people to <clears throat> continue to study there. So that is what I can tell you at the moment. No, I cannot tell you what uh, uh, is going to change tomorrow, but they are working on it in uh, Brussels, no, the capital of Belgium, where the head of the community of the European community is. They are trying to look for a solution that will be good for every refugee or every people, everybody that is uh, uh, running away from the war in Ukraine to come and settle in any part of the European country that they like. So as I said, young people are mostly welcome here. Um, uh, we, we need them to build the country later. And, uh, and a lot of things are still going on. People that are doing uh, informatics, they are highly welcome. Computer science, you know, information technology. So take the advantage of it. Start writing to the uh, relevant universities. So when you are giving, uh, I believe strongly in that one, when you have an admission to winter semester, I think uh, you will have the chance to stay. And students are equally allowed to work in Germany. They are allowed to work for 120 hours to 240 hours in a year. So you always have the chance to go and earn uh, money. Here we have uh, a minimal wage. The minimum wage now <clears throat> is going to be increased very soon to 12 euros per hour. And I realized that uh, in Kiev, where most of you people are coming from, there they pay 2 euros 20 per hour. So you can see the difference. Is The difference is very, very high and very large. <clears throat> Next question, please. Yeah, Rexy phone. Hello. Can I ask the question? Is that Rexy phone? Yeah. Um, but Rexy phone is still muted here, so I'm not sure who is talking. Oh, Lamelecon is talking. I have a question, please. Sorry, there are still people ahead of you, Lamelecon. Rexy phone, are you there? I'll move to the next person. iPhone, are you there? Am I the one? Yes, yes, yes I'm there. Yes. Okay, Rexy phone is back. iPhone, oh, one minute. Okay. Yeah, Rexy phone, go ahead, please. Yeah, um, my question is, um, I ran out from Ukraine during the war, so um, my documents, I left them. I just came with my student ID card. So is there any possibility I can register for, um, I, I can get registration done and also start schooling here in Germany? Because right now I'm in Berlin and um, I just came in yesterday. So they gave us like a refugee apartment where me and my brother can live in for four weeks. <laughs> So I want to know the next step I can take with my student ID card alone. But my brother has his passport and puts the car with him. Thank you. Mm, yeah, of course, uh, you can equally register yourself there where you are now. And, um, and then um, as time goes, you, may, you, you must need a passport. If you need a passport, the next place to go to is our Nigerian uh, embassy in Berlin. Uh, although those people there, they can't wahala what they do now. They cannot even issue passport. I don't know what is wrong with Nigeria. So <clears throat> you go there, they mess you up. So um, <clears throat> many Nigerians are living here going to uh, Holland to get their passport. Some go to Belgium to get their passport. 
and Germany normally is the second country in Europe where you have a lot of Nigerians and they cannot issue passports. It is very funny. So at the, <clears throat> at the long run, you, you always need a passport. It is written in our law, every foreigner must have a passport. If you don't have a passport, you cannot get a visa, you cannot get prolongation, and after some time, they will ask you to leave the country if you don't have a passport. And if you are living in a country, then Nigeria will come in and give you a paper to travel out. But when you need a passport, they, don't, they cannot give to you. Yeah, so, <laughs> so that is the thing. Okay. That's yeah, what we because, are saying here uh, since uh, we have been living here. Yes, sir. Um, but I have the passport copy on my telephone. So is there any way I can show them, maybe I know I'm going to, like a copy of my passport on my telephone? Uh, are you talking of uh, getting a new passport from your Nigerian embassy? Yeah, like, I mean, uh, um, so when I want to make registration for school or like to apply for like a residence permit, I have a copy of my passport and a copy of my postal card on my telephone because I use that when I'm in Kiev in case you have been stopped. Like, you can show them from your phone, like a copy of any of your documents. Yeah, if you if you are applying for, if you are doing, <clears throat> if you are making an application to get an admission to university, you can always send them a copy of your passport. But if you are applying for a visa in the foreign office, they need your passport. With that passport, they will not give you a visa. Yeah. So you have to go to Berlin and start looking for a way to get a passport in Berlin. Okay. In I'm in Berlin. Okay. I'm in Berlin already. So where can I get um, like, um, the registration in Berlin? And what school can I apply for for um, German language here? Thank you, sir. Uh, so you want to learn German language? I'll, I'll be glad to learn the German language. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So in uh, uh, in Berlin, I learned they have they have been already registering them even at the at the train station. When you come and there are people there, or even outside, very close to the train station, some people are doing registration there. Yes. When I went there, um, they just asked for my email address, my number, and my phone name. That was all information I um they required. Yeah, good. Then that one is enough, then, which means you're already registered. But if you want to register in our rat house, there's what we call rat house here. That is a place where everybody living in this country has to be registered, but you need an address of an apartment. Without the address of an apartment, you cannot go there and get yourself registered. No, but you can equally use somebody, care, care somebody's name and register yourself there. If you know, a Nigerian that is there or somebody that, is, that speaks some of the same language with you from Nigeria, you can always uh, tell them to give you the address so that you write care them and you register them and your letters will be coming to that person's letterbox. So anytime you get there's an information, he will tell you that you have a letter. Then you can get the letter and then start uh, uh, knowing what is happening. But if you want to learn the German language, there are, you can contact, uh, for instance, uh, the charity organization called Caritas. No, we have Caritas, we have Red Cross, we have, um, you just enter into Google, Google no? uh, NGOs. The NGOs will come out. There are very many too in Berlin. And even there is, um, uh, there's equally um, a Nigerian, uh, what they call an African kind of uh, umbrella called Tang. Tang is, uh, um, uh, uh, what they call an NGO, uh, with a lot of Nigeria and a lot of African uh, NGO under a sort of we call it a ban, is the major body, but a lot of other uh, clubs are under them. They, are, they have, equally have an office in Berlin called Tank. So there, I think uh, you can equally contact them. They will they will help you. And there's a Nigerian man there called Femi Awoniyi. At, um, the chairman of uh, NYSIC posted his uh, information last time. He's there in Berlin. He's a press man. He's the, he's the writer of African Korea. He has been very active in Berlin too. So uh, maybe when we finish the program today, you can con contact the people that organize uh, this our Zoom uh, meeting. They will give you his information. You contact him. Then he's going to put you on the right track. Okay, so um, like in Ukraine, um, when you come to Ukraine, you need to apply for a language course first before you can transfer to a bachelor's degree. 
So I would just want to know um, if it's also work here in Germany, you apply, you learn the German course for some months before you can start like a BA degree. Does, is this how it works here also? Yeah, it depends on the course you want to study. If you want to do masters, you can do it in English language. But if you want to study uh, a normal bachelor, of course, there are universities too where you can equally study, uh, uh, do a bachelor's degree in English uh, in language. But majority of them offer bachelor's degree in German. So then you have to you can you have to go to the university there. This is an extra course for uh, people learning German that you can be going there. Um, I think uh, four times a week to go and sit with them in the classroom and learn German. And when you finish with your German, and you pass your uh, German uh, uh, language, then you can continue with your studies. But most of the time, these people, they gain admission already. They are only just there uh, to learn the language properly so that they can follow the uh, the professors when they are teaching them né, in the lecture room. So if you don't hear the language where you are sitting down there, then you have trouble. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. So we have just about um, seven, eight minutes to the end of this program. And so I, I, know that, um, I know that we we'll still have so many unanswered questions. I'll take just about two more questions before we end this session. But not to so worry, question. we still have another session next week again, same time, same station. So even if your questions are left unanswered today, we will still be back next week to answer the questions. So I'm going to take just two more questions and it's only fair if I take it in the order with which they appear and that's iPhone and Okechuko. So okay. iPhone, please go first. Um, yeah, I'm, good sorry. I'm not, I'm not to ask a question. Um, so please, you said you were going to write me the address of where um, I can go for the registration here in Kiel. Yeah, now I have, I have written it already. Before I have been having difficulties to send it. Uh, uh, it's called Schuster Krug. Schuster Krug and Akona Strasse, ne, Akona Street. Ne, mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. any anybody uh, you you jam, uh, yeah, along in Kid, yeah, exactly. So so that is where you have to go to Schuster Schuster Krug and Akona Strasse. So that is the place. There they have a place for three hundred people. So you have to go there as quickly as possible so that they will be able to give you a room there. Thank you very okay, much. Sir. So, you. I have a question. Um, okay, Chico. Okay, yeah. Hello. Um, okay, yeah. Oh, um, sorry. Uh, okay, Chico is the next. Osinachi. Yeah. I'm Hello. Hello. Please, we need to maintain order. I'm so sorry, but Hello? there are some people that have signified interest already. Hello, okay, Chico. Yeah. Hello, sir. Hello. I have a question. Um, Osinachi, please, could you mute your microphone? Okay, who is supposed to ask this question? Hello, good evening, everyone. Yes, yeah, I have we're two, you. Yes, I have two questions. I want to know if it's possible for someone to move to UK in this period. And the second one is, is it also advisable to seek asylum? So the, quest, the, the first question is no. Now, the UK is an island and they have left the European Union and they don't want to welcome anybody. So you cannot go to the UK unless you have a British passport or you have a visa to the UK. Without that, you cannot go to the UK. So second question, don't ask for asylum. Is the wrong, is the wrong thing to do. Because asking for asylum as a Nigerian, in Nigeria, there's no war. You are not politically pursued. And you are not having problem because of, of your religion or or uh, you are not a homosexual, all those kind of things. So if you ask for asylum, you will block your chance for having any other kind of visa in this country. So the best thing, the 90 days they are giving you guys, do the best out of it. No, start hey, writing. Yes, uh, two people came to see you. Huh? Uh, police, I think. Sorry about that. Yeah, then you start uh, looking for a possibility so start writing application uh, for uh, admission into a German <clears throat> university. So as I said, you people should choose security before younger. If you start making younger, you not get a chance here. So 
choose the security first of all, which means enter into any course where they can admit you. Now you start there small, 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 and later you will grow big. Then you can change to uh, the course of your favorite later. No. Okay. So. That Thank you very thing. much. Yeah. Thank you. So and Hello. and there's something there's something I have to make clear here too. Uh, every Monday, this program will be getting. I'll be holding this program every Monday at uh, six p.m. And I equally I equally understand that many of the questions you guys are throwing here they are very private questions that cannot be answered somebody is talking can you block that person please um it is i cannot answer it probably to your satisfaction but anybody who want to contact me privately has to pay a consultation fee of 100 euros or you can always wait the monday and then you can ask your question again <clears throat> so that is what i have arrange with uh, NYSIC that every Monday at 6 p.m. I'll be doing this program for you guys so that everybody can ask his question and get yourself <clears throat> guided. Let me throw something out to you people. Don't go and give a wrong identity. Don't let people mislead you and tell you it's better you go make why you go write another name. When you write another name later, you cannot come out of that name anymore. I will not get a passport with that name because of the biometric passport being done in Nigeria. And it is written in our law here, anybody who forges his identity has no chance anymore. So please don't do that. You are in a better position. You are a student. It's not every German that can go to university here. If you are a student, you are already privileged in this country. It's a very, very big privilege. Don't go and throw it over the board. Don't throw it over the sea. So be very careful. If you move around with our people that are here, that will start telling you because they did not go to university, they don't know what it means to study. They start asking you to play while you, you will block your, your future. You have to be very, very careful. Thank you very much, Hello. sir. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hello. So, iPhone. iPhone. Yes. Uh, good day, sir. Sorry, sir. My question is, when we are registering, if can we inform them that we have like someone to stay with? That's my question. Um, that that you are staying with somebody. Yes, because uh, of now course. I'm currently. Of in course, of course, it's, it is very important. You have to tell them that you are staying because that is what the government, the government, have, the government, our government has been calling for it here. People should please take these people, take uh, help, give them your private places to sleep if you if you have uh, available chances, open it for them. And I made a statement before. Uh, this country where we are in Germany. Yeah, we have yes, a lot of nice people, but we equally have Nazis and bad ones. Yeah. So people, you should be careful who opens his arms and tell you, you can come to my house. I have a place for you to start staying. Scrutinize them very well. Be okay. very critical. So, so when we are registering, it's okay to tell them like this person wants us to be living here. So we should just register and move, move in with the person. Yeah, if they, if you if you meet somebody that says yeah, you should be staying with him, yes. and you are registering that you put his address there. Okay, okay. You have to put his address there so that they will know where you, uh, uh, where you are. Okay, sir. Then also, while we are registering, what if somebody is ready to give us like a work in, like he's ready to invite us like someone who has a company is ready to invite us into the company, like he's ready to give us a work the ability to work. So can we also inform them about that that we have the ability to get a work? Uh, uh, moment, 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 wait, please. Because at the moment, they are still discussing about working permit. It has not been finalized. Okay, okay. So uh, in, in Germany here, if you don't have a working permit, you are not allowed to work. Okay. So if you work later and they catch you, you spare your chances, which means you are a criminal. You now spare your chance of staying here. Okay, sir. No? Uh, criminals, criminals are not wanted here. No? Okay. So, Can I ask a question? Thank yeah, you so sir. much, um, Barista Yari mm. Masse. Unfortunately, we've come to the end of today's session. I'm so sorry. We will not be able to take any more questions. Oh, no. now. I have to go but you can reach out directly to Barista Yari. Um, his email address is in the chat box. 
or you can join again next week. A new link will be sent to the groups and then you can use that to join the session again next week. I'm so sorry if we're not able to take all your questions or if um, you have some particular questions that were not answered thoroughly, you can reach out to Barista MRC uh, privately after now. Thank you so much, sir, for your time. Thank you so much for gracing this occasion. And thank you so much for shedding more light to some of the confusing um, topics we had. And yes, this will be all for this week. And we'll see, uh, we'll see uh, each other next week again. Um, there are coming programs, sorry. So we have um, an educational program. Um, it will be announced in the groups. So I believe we are all in the groups. If we are not, please um, signify so that we can get the link. But all the programs that we have arranged will be announced and published or sent in all the groups. So please keep yourself informed in these groups. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much and have a wonderful um, week and wonderful evening, everyone. It's a goodbye from here. Bye bye. All right, goodbye. Yeah. What is this group of us? Thank you.